Hello, and welcome back to the Good 5 Cent Cigar Newscast. My name's Alexa Patamianos. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up this week, a look into one of URI's STEM-based clubs, Seeds of Success, a snapshot of a local Rhode Island restaurant, what's happening this week at URI, and as always, stay tuned for your Roadie Sports Corner. Seeds of Success is a student-run organization that offers opportunities for students in the College of Environmental and Life Sciences. I spoke with some members of the club's e-board to find out more. My name is Zaria. I am the president of Seeds of Success. Hi, my name is Kemi, and I am the vice president for Seeds of Success of the organization, it was established in 2013 by Giselle and Michelle Fontes. We basically provide tons of opportunities and resources to students in STEM majors, not only on their cells. So we have things like panels. We have two panels in the spring, um, a fall, a career panel, and a um, pre-health panel. Um, we send out tons of opportunities to our members. Um, we have a newsletter called the Opportunities of the Month, and that includes things like scholarships, uh, research opportunities, anything that comes our way. Um, we do various types of programs basically to help promote our members academically, professionally, and socially. The way our organization works with our meetings, um, each time a member attends a meeting or applies to one of the opportunities we have and a whole bunch of other things, we provide, we work with a point system. So if you attend a meeting that's two points, apply for an opportunity that's two points. If you have like a meeting with our advisor, you get a couple points for that. Um, and then with these points at the end of the semester, we sum them up and whoever has the top three highest points, we offer um, three categories of book awards. So the first one is $250, the second one 150, and then the third 100. And these are redeemable at the bookstore for any textbooks or for any access codes for your courses. Book awards are just a great incentive in general to just give back to our members for showing love to us by attending these meetings and enjoying them at the end of the day. Back 40, located a few towns over in North Kingstown, Rhode Island, is a great choice if you need a break from the dining hall food. With Family Weekend just passing and Alumni Weekend fast approaching, Back 40 is the perfect place to stop in and grab a bite. Ronan Himmelrich took a trip to the local joint to find out what they have to offer. If you've ever driven down Route 2 in North Kingstown, you may recognize these red walls behind me. This is Back 40. Uh, my name is Adam Quarry. Um, I am the general manager here at Back 40 in North Kingstown, Rhode Island. I've been at this restaurant for two and a half years. Actually, two and a half years, I think, tomorrow. Um, I started as a server, uh, moved up to bartending and managing within a year, and then uh, became the bar manager earlier this year, and went straight from bar managing to uh, full-time managing, and took over as general manager within a month of me full-time managing. So, yeah been here for about yeah two and a half years uh, so we opened about si six years ago in August so we're just over six years uh, before uh, it was another bar before this uh, when we first opened actually the first week was one of our worst weeks that we've ever had we actually had to shut down because uh, nobody really knew how to run our restaurant at that point um, and we were getting so much business that we couldn't handle it um, I wasn't here for it this is just what I've heard and then we reopened and things were tough for a while but luckily with the backing of the Copo family um, which they are out of Cranston. If you guys don't know Olivia Colpo, she was Miss Universe in 2017. Um, she is a big backing to this restaurant and her father and her family. Um, actually, we have two of their uh, family members working with us tonight. Um, so it is a family restaurant. It's not, um, it's not corporate. It's very family owned, family based. We're very personable. Um, so yeah, six years we've been open. Um, I've been here for two and a half. A lot of things have changed. We went through COVID. I joined right at the end of COVID and there were still a lot of things going on at that time. So we call it like back 40 because a lot of people when they're done working on the farm for the day or they're done working, um, they go back to the back 40 acres where they go and party and drink and kind of hang out and spend their night after they worked all day on the farm. So we wanted back 40 to have that kind of backwards meeting where um, you, do, you, you go to your job in the morning, 
Um, you work hard all day, and then the moment you leave your job, you want to go party, you want to go hang out, you want to have a drink, you want to go eat food. And that's kind of the way we treated it, where we want people after work to come and visit us and, uh, and like spend their time, ha hang out, and uh, have family gatherings with us. So we have a full craft uh, selection. So we have about 12 different cocktails on our menu, and then we offer some mocktails as well for the non-alcoholics the children and the pregnant p people, or the, even the people that just don't like drinking. Uh, we, we give options. Our, one of our main, uh, one of our staples is our Blushing Cosmo. People will know. We house infuse our own strawberry vodka, uh, which is also made, which, which is delicious. It's out of this world. We are very known for our draft selection. We have 24 total drafts. We don't have any of the domestics like Coors Light, Bud Light, uh, Budweiser on draft. We don't offer it. We have all local breweries. So if you're a brewery person, if you like beer, uh, we have a lot of Tilted Barn, a lot of Proclamation from Rhode Island. We've got Moniker, Shades On, Graysale, Hive, everything from Rhode Island you can think of, we carry at some point. We have two on from Tilted Barn right now. So um, so we actually have four other restaurants in Rhode Island at the moment with a fifth on the way. Uh, we have Black Oak over in Coventry, which is right on uh, Tyog Ave. And then we have Union of Maine, which is over in East Greenwich, where Red Stripe used to be. Uh, right at the beginning of Main Street in East Greenwich, and then we have Evie's, which we just recently opened last September. That's down in Westerly, and then we have a fifth place coming up, uh, which is very exciting. It's going to be called Lake Taco. Uh, that is going to be right down the road from our other sister restaurant, Black Oak, uh, right where uh, Nino's or More Tavern used to be. We moved into that space. Located at 20 South County Trail in North Kingstown, Back 40 is open seven days a week. For the Good Five Cent Cigar, I'm Ronan Hemwork. Here is your week at URI. Sounds correct. Wednesday, October 11th is National Coming Out Day. The Gender and Sexuality Center, along with many other campus offices and organizations, celebrated on the quad. On Friday the 13th, the College of Business is hosting their Fall Career and Internship Fair, located in the Memorial Union Ballroom. This weekend is Homecoming Weekend, featuring lots of activities, including the homecoming football game on Saturday. And now over to Peter Gigliotti with your Rhodey Sports Corner. Thanks, Alexa. What's going on, Rhodey Nation? I'm Peter Gigliotti, and welcome to this week's edition of your Rhodey Sports Corner. URI and Brown football battled out in Providence on Saturday for bragging rights over the Ocean State and the coveted Governor's Cup. I was there to witness it all and show you the highlights. What a tribute to football. You know, good, hard-hitting, clean game. Uh, both teams played their asses off. For the 41st time, URI and Brown football faced off on the gridiron to decide who would go home with the Governor's Cup. Brown looked to get their first victory against URI since 2017, but the Rams were determined to take the trophy back to Kingston. Let's go home! Let's go home! After the coin toss from Rhode Island Governor Daniel McKee, the battle for the Ocean State began. The Rams' defense was tough early, forcing Brown to kick a field goal in the red zone, a common theme for the day as Rhodey was all grit. I mean, we go by a term called grit um, every single play, no matter what. Um, it's a big game, a short game, you just get the ball down and keep on playing. We just, gonna, we just live by grit. So. Quarterback Kasim Hill in the offense fired back in three plays with this 50-yard touchdown to get there, Summers. The Rams would fail to score on their two-point conversion attempt, making the score 6-3. to three. A rushing touchdown would put Brown up 10-6 until Hill rolled out of the pocket and fired a touchdown to Marquise Buchanan, reclaiming the lead 13-10. Buchanan, a Providence native, had an impressive game in his return to his hometown, leading the team with five receptions for 84 yards and a touchdown. Uh, yeah, in my hometown, in the city. Brown was able to score on a diving play from West Rocket, making the score 17 to 13. But the celebration was short-lived, as on the ensuing kickoff, A-10 Special Team Player of the Week, Randy Jordan, took this kick 95 yards to the crib, taking the lead again for Rhodey with a score of 20 to 17. Another Brown field goal would tie the game at 20 apiece, heading into the half. After another Brown touchdown, URI was fighting from behind again. The Rams were able to maintain their composure, though, as Hill put the ball exactly where it needed to be for Darius Savage to catch this 27-yard touchdown.
The two teams now tied again with 27 apiece. The heavy rain became a factor as Brown was unable to hold on to the ball on this third down play, giving running back Jaden McKenzie the chance to score this 50-yard touchdown. Rams up 34-27. After another late Brown field goal, the Bears had a chance to win the game late in the fourth quarter. But Rhodey's defense didn't quit, sealing the game with this interception from A-10 Rookie of the Week, Saeed Gibbs. This was Gibbs' second interception of the day, the only interceptions Brown has thrown the entire season. Uh, we came into this game knowing they didn't have any turnovers, so we wanted to be the first team to make sure that happened. So. I just got lucky and got those two. The celebration began in Providence as the Rams win 34 to 30. We went bear hunting. That cup is coming back to Kingstown. Oh, URI improves to 4-2 in the season, securing their fifth consecutive Governor Cup victory. They look to carry this momentum back to Kingston, where they'll face off against the Richmond Spiders. From inside Brown Stadium, I'm Peter Gigliotti with the Roadie Sports Corner. Men's soccer faced off against fellow Atlantic 10 opponent Fordham on Saturday. Here's Liz Gomez for more on the story. Saturday marked the 32nd encounter between Rhode Island and Fordham University soccer since 1982. When hosting Fordham at the URI Soccer Complex, Rhode Island is 9, 2, and 1 at the moment. This game marks the beginning of a five-game homestand for Rhode Island, which last played at home on September 23rd. Rhode Island's goalkeeper, Edu Rodriguez, made six saves as Fordham put tremendous pressure, recording 17 total shots. After receiving a long pass at the top right corner of the box, Brandon Birmingham weaved between two defenders and lined a shot towards the goal beating Fordham's Carter Abbott on his dive to the left. The 63rd minute goal helped the Rams score a 1-0 victory. <laughs> Due to a scuffle in front of URI's goal that led in defender Rodrigo de Castro receiving a red card, Rhode Island had to play the final 2 minutes and 30 seconds with one man down. Let's take a look at some other scores around campus this week. Men's cross country won the New England Championship in Boston on Saturday, their first championship since 1952. That win was highlighted by four roadie top 10 finishers. The women's cross country team also got a podium finish, coming in third at the New England Championship. A successful day for roadie cross country, to say the least. Volleyball lost a pair of matchups over the weekend to Davidson. They looked to bounce back against VCU on Saturday. They sit at 3-16 on the year. Men's soccer had a dominant performance over the University of Maine Fort Kent, winning 8-1 on their senior night. They are now 4-5-3 after a pair of victories. Women's tennis competed at the ITA Invitational over the weekend. Their performance was highlighted by top finisher Sophie Herman, who reached the round of 32. And women's soccer tied their game against Fordham on senior night with a score of 2-2. That's all we've got for this week's edition of the Roadie Sports Corner. For more updates, make sure to follow us on social media at cigar underscore sports. Back to you, Alexa. That's all we have for you this week at the 5 Cent Cigar Newscast. As always, make sure to check us out at roadiecigar.com and follow us on social media at Roadie Cigar. From Kingston, Rhode Island, I'm Alexa Vitamianos. Have a great week, Roadie.